Good. So there are intentionally no words spoken or songs sung between the reading of the gospel and the sermon to, to connect those two. Uh, and I was going to use the sermon time uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, the service itself. But the gospel was too compelling to not uh, at least speak to it in some way. Uh, so I have two main points I want you to take from this. Uh, the first point is around chasms. The truth is... <coughs> There are chasms in our world uh, that are getting magnified, that we, uh, that we benefit from in some way. Uh, and I think the kingdom of God doesn't. I think that's what uh, God is trying to tell us today, that the kingdom of God does not have these giant chasms that keep brother and sister, beloved children of God, separated uh, uh, in different ways. And I can uh, tell you, sometimes I have in my own desire to, uh, to provide what's best for my children uh, exacerbated this chasm. I can tell you, I sent my kids to expensive preschool and uh, even though they were ready for, uh, for elementary school, uh, and I've told this before, uh, things like fine motor skills and leadership qualities compelled me to send them to preschool for another year. That is a freedom that not everybody has. And when they showed up at kindergarten, uh, uh, certainly my son uh, uh, in, a, in a public school with people from uh, throughout the world, uh, it was a chasm of several grades uh, that these children were starting off school behind. Uh, because of a chasm of, uh, of my privilege, I was able to provide that, that leg up for my children. Uh, and I can say that it, it is a little bit self-serving. There's other chasms that I contribute to. Uh, I live in a large house uh, and, and, and I have stuff. Uh, and I have uh, a footprint uh, that not everybody in the world could have. In fact, if everybody in the world had the same footprint that I have, we would require several, uh, several earths uh, to be able to accommodate. Uh, and that's true for not just me, but for most of us. Uh, so we enjoy that chasm, uh, even though uh, our heart breaks uh, for that mother who can't provide uh, a, a food or necessary medication uh, uh, for their children, uh, for those that, that go under sheltered or underclothed or underfed. Uh, but there are ways that we enjoy uh, the other side of that chasm. But remember, the image of God, the vision of God has no chasms. Uh, and so I think uh, the first part is acknowledging. We saw so clearly last week uh, that the landowner's privilege, that the landowner's power uh, caused him uh, to be able to exploit and, and profit uh, from those that have less. Uh, sometimes it's far more subtle in our, our current times. Uh, but I think we're called to look closely, to have our eyes wide open uh, to the ways that, uh, that we enjoy the chasm. Uh, the chasm of, of, of being served in so many ways uh, in Fauquier County to have so many of the modern conveniences, uh, but without adequate housing for the people that are providing some of those services. Uh, but I invite you to open your eyes uh, and maybe then maybe footsteps or leaps uh, to close that chasm may take place. Another thing that I think this passage uh, elucidates that, that causes that chasm uh, has to do with the virtue of the month that we've been talking about all month in, uh, in school, and that is respect. And I told the children, I, I see respect uh, from its root uh, of looking again, that spectacles, uh, putting on glasses that are different than the way we may have seen that person before, uh, to respect them, to see them again with God's eyes. Uh, and I think what we see in the gospel uh, is a failure to do so. The rich man, even after he is in the, the, uh, the, the bowels of hell still sees Lazarus the same way. Still says, can you send that, uh, that minion down here uh, to, 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 to put drips of water into my mouth? Will you send him to go tell my brothers? He's still less than. Even after all of that, he doesn't see Lazarus as an equal, as a beloved child of God, as the way that God sees all of God's children. If my child, if either of my children uh, were on the bottom side of that chasm, the far side of that chasm, I would turn heaven and earth upside down to make sure that they have uh, whatever is denied them. What God calls us to do, what we're called to do out of our baptism, to respect, to see again the dignity of every human being, the wholeness, the value the opportunity of every single person is to fight tooth and nail to close that chasm, 
to see them the way that we see our brothers and sisters, our children, the way that God sees them. So I think putting on those glasses, God's glasses, seeing them again in the full dignity and beauty in which God made them helps us to close that chasm and also opening our eyes to the injustices that God sees, to the disparities that God sees, to the things that we would notice acutely if they involved our own children, helps us to take those steps and then maybe those leaps and to build up the kingdom of God where there is no chasm. Amen.